rolling. Three, two, one, you're live. Welcome to the show. Our special guest today is composer, trumpeter, producer, DJ, and a, the founder of Gondwana Records, Matthew Halsall. Hello. He is a, hi, hi, Matthew. Uh, he's joining us from, what, are you in Manchester? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Manchester, UK tonight, uh, eight o'clock, your time. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, you're based in Manchester, right, Matthew? He's a uh, spiritual jazz trumpeter and record label boss who makes beautiful music drawing on the jazz of Alice Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders and contemporary electronica influences and mindfulness. So I've been thinking about the trumpet a lot this past week, Dr. D. And uh, I found a poem that I thought might give a little insight into Matthew's sound world, his love for the instrument as an extension of himself and the inspiration that he draws from the sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth on his new album. So this poem, really short, but it's called The Trumpet by Edward Thomas. And it goes like this. Rise up, rise up. And as the trumpet blowing chases the dreams of men, as the dawn glowing, the stars that left unlit, the land and water, Rise up and scatter the dew that covers the print of last night's lovers. Scatter it, scatter it. While you are listening to the clear horn, forget men, everything on this earth, newborn, except that it is lovelier than any mysteries. Open your eyes to the air that has washed the eyes of the stars through all the dewy night, up with the light. To the old wars, arise, arise. So I've also been thinking uh, before this interview and this past week a lot about inspiration and how it's as important as other kind of unexplained human traits, right? Love, compassion, mindfulness, empathy. And I'd like to focus on this topic with uh, you, Matthew, a little bit. The topic of inspiration in relation to your band and your music. So we know that inspiration is an unconscious burst of creativity in a literary, musical, or visual art, right? Or other artistic endeavors. The Greeks believed that the inspiration or enthusiasm came from the muses as well as the gods Apollo and Dionysus. So with this in mind, please help me welcome our very special guest today. Again, composer, trumpeter, he's a producer, a DJ, and he is the founder of Gondwana Records, Matthew Halsell. So welcome, uh, Matthew. So so good to have you. Uh, I just thought that poem, when I read it, reminded me of your new album. Uh, and it also reminded me of a little bit of maybe your process um, and some of the things that you really care about. So again, I'd like to explore that the, the theme of inspiration. Um, yeah. It's such a human thing, isn't it? It's it's really mysterious and profound at the same time. Where do you think it comes from, inspiration? Um, I mean, I I, I think that uh, for me, uh, music is uh, a beautiful way of almost meditating or escaping from reality. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I live in a city, but I I really like making music inspired by nature and and peacefulness and meditation and and um it's not that i don't enjoy the hustle and bustle of the city i love being around people i'm a big community person i like to check out all the musicians in the city and go to as many gigs as possible so i need to be near the city for for to get more soul food for myself mm -hmm. um, but i also like to put on my headphones and close my eyes and compose and dream of these um, beautiful places um, and these visions in my mind um, 
and I, I like traveling um although you know obviously there's issues with global warming but uh i try and more and more to travel more eco-friendly with trains and and uh you know other forms of transport i like cycling and stuff but um that's really important to me that's inspired me a lot as well uh, i went out to japan a lot when i was maybe in from around 2003 to five i was out there quite a lot and drew a lot of inspiration from their culture and the countryside and the architecture and of course the instrumentation so i i take it from lots of different places i've been meditating since i was 14 years old uh, doing various types of meditation and um yeah it's kind of I, I like my music to be really honest and, and playful uh, i try and treat it like i'm still like the, there's a quote from picasso about finding your inner child when you are being creative and i still try to be as as fun and and free uh when i'm composing i don't really like the idea of it having loads of rules so yeah are there optimal conditions that you found that really that where inspiration does come to you uh, you know um i mean i think having a very beautiful environment i recently went to this 1950s um modernist house uh, it was a, a, a beach house uh, in in the uk on the northeast coast and it was absolutely beautiful it's been restored to its kind of 50s uh, version interior wise and and i sat and composed for four four days straight there um on my own with my headphones on and in this beautiful environment and I composed two tunes a day. Uh, it felt really good. Um, what town well, was that? Pardon? What town was that? Did you say? It was a place called Bridlington, which is in the northeast of England. Um, it's not a particularly well-known place, but it's yeah. kind of got a charm and quirk of its own. And uh, I went and did a lot of exercise down on running and walking along the uh, waterfront and the beach. Um, so it's a nice place to go and get some headspace. But uh you know, at the same time, I like composing at home. I have a home recording studio and, and it's a lot of fun uh, to to be able to just jump on it whenever I feel like it. Um, yeah. And in the last, since Wednesday, um, I've, I've just signed a lease on a really beautiful old recording studio in, in Manchester that um, I'm currently in the process of restoring. And hopefully it's going to be the home for all the artists on the record label to come and be creative. So. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see that. That sounds beautiful. That sounds great. Uh, so there are conditions and places that you can go, you know, where, where, inspiration comes to you i'm just fascinated uh by music and how it comes to a person such as yourself you know you create these these sound landscapes these um you, you create these songs these these um melodies these harmonies these uh, you know you, you you create something that the rest of us get to enjoy it's a real gift um and I'm just naturally curious about the process. So I don't, I know a lot of the stuff you can't put your thumb on and it's hard to, to really put into words because it's such a natural process to you. Um, one of the things that I love that others have said about you to describe you is that you, that you live, you know, you've create this, um, this world of sound of your own sounds and there's so much noise in the world. Uh, how do you how do you turn, tune that out and 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 pull from wherever it comes from this this great music that you record with with yourself and and others as a leader as a band leader? Um, I guess I guess you just uh, it's it's kind of the older I get, my ears are kind of more tuned to music than anything else i've been playing trumpet since i was six years old and and it's it's one of these i was talking to a sound engineer live sound engineer recently and and we we actually don't have a problem with tuning out other things we have a problem with being able to hear other things because when you're in a 
bar or a restaurant, we tend to be listening to the music, but naturally it's just our ears are programmed to listen to music as much as possible. So when we're trying to have a conversation, it's quite hard sometimes to uh, uh, detach from the music. Uh, and, and a lot of people, when they go deep into making music or working in the music industry, they have the same problem. So I don't have a problem with shutting out the rest of the sounds that as long as I'm making music. Um, and I think also being able to put on headphones and um be creative that that shuts out a lot of sounds and environments but I, i'm really curious about composing uh, environments inspire me like uh, on my new album um it, it's inspired by a lot of field recordings of of rainforests and jungles uh tropical sounds uh, i i was sitting listening uh in, in a very cold, miserable winter in Manchester to all these exotic sounds and thinking, this is a nice environment to compose in. So if I shut yeah. my eyes and just listen and hear nature and, and sort of find my way of connecting to that, and, and that dictated uh, some of the instrumentation I use, like the kalimba and the marimba. A lot of the percussive sounds are inspired by nature. And then when I shared this concept with with the band they they all really understood it and enjoyed doing it from this angle it was mm. quite a quite a playful fun thing so we had lots of sounds ambient rainforest sounds in the background when we were actually recording the album uh, and then they were taken off because i actually felt it f it had the right feeling without adding that in the end uh, you know, that you nice... captured that with your with your instruments and your yeah. ears yeah wow it was, it was a really nice relaxing environment to play because we all we, the way we record these days is um in different rooms uh, uh for isolation purposes to maximize the sound quality of the harp mm. and the double bass and the drums and the percussion um so we've all got headphones on and we're all sat in different rooms but we we've got one thing in common that we're listening to this beautiful uh natural sound um so it, it comes through with, and I'm, that's interesting that you pulled out some of the the obvious sounds and and created them uh, because it does come through. It's almost I I almost didn't, I almost felt like I I hear that, you know, with the instruments. Um, a lot of the musicians that we've talked to in the past have had a muse. Uh, do you have a muse, or have you ever had a muse? Um. For, what in terms of a, par a, a partner girlfriend or, yeah or yeah, something that's someone that's inspired you yeah I, I, of course um <laughs> i think I've, my, I've been with my girlfriend uh, 12 nearly 13 years so, and she's brilliant mary emma louise uh, as i named one of my tracks some people think that's three different uh people but it's an irish uh name and um she's been great uh she's from northern ireland and and very beautiful and strong character um and uh i've written tracks when we've been over to ireland so there's a track called cushion done on the into forever album and and there's the track mary emma louise on the fletcher moss park album so yeah i, I definitely think that uh being in a good relationship helps and offers mm -hmm. a lot of positive energy and love and support um i think but you know uh I'm sure that there's people out there without muses that have made some fantastic music as well. It's not the only way to. Well, nothing inspires like love, does it? M music. I mean, the best, yeah. to me, the best songs are the love songs and, and the songs that have been inspired by, by that feeling or that love, compassion. Um, what first inspired you, Matthew, to pick up a trumpet and at six and learn to play it? Uh, I mean, it's so such, a, such a beautiful instrument but it would seem so alien at six to me <laughs> yeah i, I, I kind of grew up in a family that weren't musicians but loved music so there was we had a beautiful record player and record collection and my parents and and there was always a piano in the house and there was always music uh and my granddad played piano and organ and um but my parents had a friend who was a painter who used to paint um, musicians uh, in a jazz club um, and my parents went to the jazz club it was every 
moment on a Sunday. Uh, it was an, a really beautiful old mill, like uh, in mm. it's quite a famous kind of jazz club in in the north north of England. It was called Wigan Jazz Club, um, and it was a uh, this really cool old mill and and there was a jazz big band that used to play a residency there and uh, my parents took me when i was six and the band were playing things like dizzy gillespie's a night in tunisia and milestones and many other great, great you song. know trumpet trumpet driven songs and and for me i got really excited by the music, the the drums were incredible. They had an amazing drummer, uh, really good trumpet players. But also, I really liked the character of the musicians that were playing the trumpet. There was something that I felt a connection, even mm. at six. It's what do you think that connection was? Can you put your finger on it? Have you defined um, it that you felt? I don't, I, I don't know what. It was just a. They seemed to be really happy and having fun on stage, and and they were playing with a lot of fire and, and energy and uh even though my music's not like that now but um you know it's, well it can be at points but uh, especially live but um you know it was it was something lots of different elements the personality of the trumpet players the the way that they played uh, and and how that elevated the music um that got me really excited i mean i I was really lucky that from that age onwards, I was going every month to the jazz club and uh, I saw Roy Hargrove and Terrell Stafford and mm. um, Dusko Gojkovic and Maynard Ferguson and Bobby Shue and loads of trumpet players um, that, that would, you know, inspire me. Roy Hargrove in particular, I really liked um, and he came over quite a lot and played at the jazz club. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there was loads more players than that um, and yeah. then um, what, what an environment uh, at that age that sounds you know amazing uh, you know um you have a new fan a number one fan and that's my mother so uh <laughs> franny is her name higgins is my last name so we're irish Do, you got dr deal yeah. dugan so we, we got a couple <laughs> irish boys here but my mom uh just recently got turned on to jazz. I, I think I started playing it for her and, you know, and she just fell in love with it and she fell in love with your music, especially it's all she has on these days. And it's a, she, we, we started talking about the trumpet. That's why I really started thinking about it this week. And she said, isn't it amazing? She's 70. She's like, I've, I never knew this world of jazz. I never knew, I, I never listened to music with a trumpet and I'm just, she's just enthralled by your trumpet and your, and your playing. Um, so she wanted me to ask you, you know, what is the history of a, tr of the trumpet? If you, if you know, and, <laughs> you know, cause I'm sure it just has this, uh, this long history and, and uh, I'm sure there are listeners out there that would be as fascinated as she is by that question. God, yeah, uh, I'm fascinated <laughs> by that question. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, I haven't done that much research. I mean, I, I've, I've got a beautiful old trumpet from 1954 that's uh, one that Miles used to play. Uh, it's a Martin wow. Committee. Um, it's not his, not the one he played himself. Oh, just a... very expensive. But, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, but it's the same model, and and it's from America, and I, I managed to buy it from a trumpet dealer in Poland, and and um, I think I think that. Uh, going further back than maybe I, I probably wouldn't be able to go much further back than uh, Dizzy Gillespie or, or someone that's kind of where I start uh, we do have to take a break here um, well let me let me just ask this question and then on the on the flip side we'll uh, I want to talk about jazz clubs and jazz in America as well uh, if I had never seen a trumpet and I didn't know how it worked and how the music, how you make music out of this instrument. How would you describe this to someone who had never seen a trumpet, didn't know how you created the sounds that you do through the, the vessel? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky one uh, to explain. <laughs> um, it is kind of one of those instruments that are, it's very 
you have to be a very patient person to play it. It's not a pretty thing to to start out. Um, it takes a lot of breathing, but um, people think that it's all about a huge amount of breath, breath but it's about the breath control. Uh, mm. And it's about the muscle memory and, and the in particular, the way your lips and your tongue are set up and, and that helps to kind of create the different pitches and movement within the instrument and you've only got three valves um so three. okay yeah so they kind of they play a lot of different notes um are the different combinations um, so that takes quite a long time to get used to um but you can play maybe three or four octaves uh, most players can play um i really like playing deep into the sort of middle to lower octaves so i spend a lot of time practicing um similar to sort of human voice register i don't i don't like some people can play crazy high uh, but uh that's not for me i kind of think that if you're going to do that get a flute or something to do it because it's uh, <laughs> much prettier on a flute but uh I, i'm impressed by it but i'm also like it's not the way i hear uh or my voice on the trumpet um so so yeah i mean it <laughs> But it, it's it's a beautiful instrument um, when it warms up and when you um, practice all the time, it's really rewarding. Um, and I feel like it's quite close to the human voice uh, in hmm, many ways. Interesting. And, and, I, and I like to think of it as the way I would communicate with people anyway, but from a melodic uh, sense. So Yeah, it touches the soul, definitely. And, and a lot of your songs really get me that way you know it's just it's it's just beautiful we're gonna go to a break here with uh my uh matthew halsell and the gondwana orchestra worldwide awards 2016 this is a live concert and i just loved this piece and that's what you're gonna listen to at break we'll be right back let me do a commercial mm -hmm. for him sir okay that's great stuff count matthew. you down Okay. Three, two, one, you're live. Pick up the new album. Oh, I'm sorry. Three, two, one, you're live. Pick up the new album, Salute to the Sun. Merchandise, videos, and news go to MatthewHalsell.com. That's M A T T H E W H A L S A L L.com. Find Matthew Halsell on Facebook and Instagram at Matthew Halsell Music and grow your jazz library and check out all the artists on Gondwana Records at gondwanarecords.com. Okay. I've got a couple, so that's one. <laughs> How was that? Was that good? Did we? Anything yeah. else you want me to promote? <laughs> no, that's great. I've God. never had that before. So, <laughs> oh yeah, well, uh, each commercial break, um, we'll we'll do we'll plug you even more. Um, I loved uh, just exploring Gondwana Records and the artists there. So I've got, as we get to the end, I really want to talk about the new album, your band, you know, your band members, um, and then some of your artists under your label there. Uh, so we that's we're building to that. Cool. <laughs> just uh, but god man you've got some great artists there and send them our way if you want any of them promoted well we'd love to do interviews with them yeah i'm sure they'll all love to do it so. yeah okay. okay let me make sure let me find my spot here Got it. All right. What's the weather like over there these yeah, tonight? It's, it's really lovely. The sun's, uh, I've got the curtains shut and the sun is still beaming on my face at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks like light coming in off the side yeah. there. So it's still light yeah. over there. It's, yeah, what it's is it? 8 30? Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, really beautiful. Um, I, I think it's going to change. It's supposed to rain on Saturday or Sunday here. Mm. But, uh, I've been really happy that the weather has got better because we had a crazy couple of weeks, uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, where it was just rain all the time. I was, everyone it was, was just 
Confused. Just getting depressed. It, it yeah. seems to me that the uh, that the rain and that type of weather would inspire great trumpet playing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just you know, smoky, rainy trumpet blues. Yeah, yeah. People right. have described it as rain stricken uh, spiritual jazz. So I love there it. You go. I like it. All okay. Right. Um, Ready? Yeah, bring us back. Or I'll bring us back, Dr. D. Three, two, one, you're live. Our special guest today is composer, trumpeter, producer. He's a DJ, and he's also the founder of Gondwana Records, Matthew Halsell. He's also such a talented musician. And uh, we're talking about all of that today with him. He joins us from Wow, he's over in the UK tonight at eight thirty in the evening, and uh, such such a pleasure to have him. Uh, welcome back, Matthew. Hello. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between American jazz and British jazz. I didn't know there was a difference, and maybe you can explain that to me. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I guess the only difference is the place that it's made, and obviously okay. that's the, it. Huh? There's a, a, I mean, the American jazz is incredible, and and it's the foundations of it. Um, yeah, and so all my heroes are American jazz musicians, pretty much. Uh, so so in that sense, uh, yeah, you, you've got you've got the home of jazz there. Um, yeah. For, me and but uh, other than that in in contemporary jazz i think that um uh, i guess in the uk there's a real boom in jazz at the moment and the media everyone loves it and it's it's a very popular hip kind of mm. genre um and lots of young people are playing it which is really positive um but uh, i think uh, you know in america christian scott and people are doing amazing records and and i'm really interested in more of the stuff uh, i need to come over more to the states yeah you do well I've not, one of our, I've not been many times so. i was gonna ask one of our, our really great friends of the show and just a great friend in general is uh the owner of birdland jazz club in new york city uh johnny valente in fact i called him on the way into the studio today to to, to find out if you had ever played there at birdland um he was closed down like all clubs and almost lost the club after, I mean, they opened in 1949, Charlie Parker, his wife sold it to him, to Johnny in the eighties. Um, he, he's reopening on right. July 1st. So I, I wanted to give him a little shout out there. And then I'm, I'm curious if you've, if you, if you guys know each other, if you've played at his club or if you ever no, would like to play. No. I've never, I've only played in uh, New Orleans when I was 14 uh, at the International Jazz Festival uh, when I was playing with a big band at that point. And then the only other time was Rochester Jazz Festival. Um, mm. So uh, not been, not been over in the States that much. There's so much for me to discover, but uh, I believe in, in being patient and the time, timing is everything and uh, not to just come over when yeah. people people need time to discover it we're we're a little jazz record label in in the uk and it takes a long time to get records out to the states so it's a huge huge place <laughs> well, your song together on spotify was premiered as one of uh, it was it was out there every all week and and that's how my mom found it and then i found right. it and then we you know then started sharing it and now it's on the soundtrack for the show uh, but it, you're right. It does take some time to, to you, and then you find somebody like you, a listener like me, and a fan like me. We'll find someone like you, and then just go, where were you all my life? <laughs> Love That's the how music. it works. Mm -hmm. it's joining the dots and the kindred spirits across the world. Um, it's it's crazy. I mean, places like South Africa. I didn't realize that we had a big fan base out there, and I, I went over about maybe five years ago and, and my first gig out there was in front of 2000 people. So like two, 1000 capacity gigs in a row. Wow. And, uh, and that's where I met Dwight Tribble, uh, the American jazz singer uh, based in LA and we became really good friends and collaborated. So it was nice to work with an American artist um, and I'd like to work with more. I've, I've a, Got plans to work with some like Lonnie Liston Smiths. Apparently, uh, he's been in touch uh, a long time ago about 
he liked one of my tracks, Badder Weather, and he heard it on a jazz uh, radio station when he was in the UK. So we've been chatting on and off uh, about collaborating, but it's hard because of the distance. But yeah, but yeah uh, I'd love to work with more artists. It's really interesting how artists, musicians have found, though, over this last year through this, you know, the challenges of not being able to perform live, of not being able to connect or, or the, and the distance and all that through uh, technology, through through things like, you know, what we're doing here on Zoom. And, and they've been able to come up with ways to innovative ways to collaborate, to, to do music together over the distances, which I, I think is a silver lining for sure out of this last year and a half, if there is one. Um, you mentioned Africa and you have created, as we, we mentioned earlier, your own rich sound world. What does, and I want to talk about some of those inspirations as well, but what does the sound world sound like to you? Can you, can you define that, uh, your world, your sound, if you had to describe Matthew's sound world what would what were the what would those sounds be in your world well, i guess it's prominent definitely, sounds as in the instrumentation or the yeah or just or kind of the nature the you know if it's rain if it's water if it's you know well, sunlight does that have a sound well, people have described it as rain stricken spiritual jazz but uh you know there's lots more i've just re released an album salute to the sun so uh, it's not all rain <laughs> so mm -hmm. but yeah yeah, so. What is spiritual jazz defined? Well, I guess everyone's got a different uh, take on that. For for me, I, I've been studying meditation since I was 14 years old. Uh, I went to a Maharishi transcendental uh, meditation school uh, at that age for my last two years of my GCSEs and then kept it going throughout my life. It's been a really brilliant part of who I am uh, and and helped me to see the world in a nice, calm, peaceful way and to treat people with a lot more love and respect uh, through reading and studying. Uh, and I've also studied a lot of Buddhist meditation. I do Kadampa Buddhist meditation at the moment. Um, and I'm really happy that the classes have just opened up again, but they're, they're socially distanced, but um they're beautiful it's really nice to meditate with people in a room again um so so that has a big impact on my music i would i would say that um do i, do I keep going or yeah no i was he gave us the minute the one minute signal and i'm oh, okay, just yeah, acknowledging yeah. that i saw him do you need um, some water over there dr d <laughs> i'm good okay so the so, spirit so and what what is this one? What's this called? The the meditation? I'm sorry. The so Buddhist... the Kadampa Buddhist meditation okay. is the one I'm doing most at the moment. I really love it, and the teachers are great, and the they're in really beautiful spaces in Manchester with lots of sun and trees around and stuff. So so yeah, it's great. As things are opening up here, um, and you're able, it's it's, fun, it's funny the things that you maybe did it, you took it for granted before, right? The community, the doing, practicing, uh, you know, the spirituality, uh, meditation with others, sharing your music with others. Um, you know, you maybe, maybe, or maybe may not have taken it for granted, but, but, now, but it's apparent right now that as you're able to get out there again, to, to, to perform, to, to be around people that it's inspiring your music yeah i've really and missed that it's building more of, yeah something that uh i guess uh i i under kind of valued in some ways uh two years of not touring uh as much uh and now we're doing some small gigs i've got one next week in manchester it's only going to be 60 people it's in a big room but 60 people which will be really nice but it's kind of crazy and I, I love is it sold out already yeah 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 it's hmm. uh but it's so um, dr d we can't i guess we can't get in <laughs> that's the way it goes i mean we know somebody i mean who's uh, real it close matter. to it. he's already got 60 killed. <laughs> but sorry I'm, I'm interrupting you uh, matthew i'm sorry no but it's just really beautiful i think i think the thing that's important for me and my music is is that it's not 
um, all it's not about just me. It's not about uh, just the musicians. It's it's about the listener, the musicians, and offering something uh, that mm-hmm. is really almost like a meditation uh, class. It, it, it's supposed to be part of um, the studies and kind of in influence inspired by my studies in Buddhism and, and uh, Indian meditation. And, and so that all comes across. And some of the instrumentation I use on, on stuff is like the Tampora Indian drone instrument is, has a really meditative quality. Some of the bells, the Tibetan chimes and, and things like that are really influenced by meditation and stuff and i like that meditative quality i like the idea that music can have healing values um and and people have said that it's been really good for them uh yeah. mentally and and uh spiritually so so i like that connection and and i liked it when i heard don cherry and and alice coltrane and john coltrane and everyone their connection to to spiritual um studies um is really fascinating and beautiful um, yeah and it, when alice, alice talks it feels like you're talking to a really heavy sort of buddhist uh teacher or monk or someone um it's amazing i just feel very relaxed listening to her voice so you set it up you set up our next segment perfectly because I, when we come back i do want to talk to you about Alice Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders uh, when we come back from this short break. So don't go anywhere. And I, I just wanted to make a comment about how uh, you mentioned the different worlds, the different um, continents that you that found your music and, and surprise you. I mean, and, and look at this, we're here in Santa Barbara, California, miles and miles away, a continent away, an ocean in between us. And, and your music is, airing and finding its way through Santa Barbara and Southern California. It's so nice to have your music and to share this experience with you. We are speaking with our special guest today, composer, trumpeter, producer, DJ, and founder of Gondwana Records, Matthew Halsell. We'll be right back after this break. Okay. Love it, man. Oh, I forgot to mention which song we were going out with. I'll mention when we come back. So let me play, let's play that commercial that I just recorded again okay. here, okay. Dr. D, if you don't mind. Sure. And then on the next one, I'm going to, I'm going to give out a promotion for mind um, that I know you support speaking of, you know, mental health and uh, Matthew, if that's good, the, you know, yeah, the yeah. mind.com, mind, mind.org, I mean, mind.uk.org. Yeah. So I'll do that on the next commercial break. Okay, here we go. Okay. Three, two, one, you're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. Our very special guest today joins us from the UK, Manchester, England. He's a composer, he's a trumpeter, a producer, founder of Gondwana Records, Matthew Halsell. Uh, pick up the new album, by the way, Salute to the Sun. We're listening to that album, most of that album, throughout this entire interview. And we went out actually um, last break, I believe, with Salute to the Sun. We came in with Joyful Spirits of the Universe. Okay, so welcome back, Matthew. It's nice to nice to have you here. Yeah. Let's talk of chat. yeah, it's so good to, to to hear your process and to hear your music, uh, you know, with your stories about how you've created such a beautiful sound world for all of us to enjoy. Alice Coltrane. Tell us about Alice um yeah she's she's uh one of my biggest influences uh, i think when i was around the time i was studying transcendental meditation uh in the north of england um she i discovered i'd known about john coltrane's music for a long time because you know being influenced by jazz from nearly six years old uh, it was alice's son right uh, John Coltrane, <laughs> no, the partner. No? Uh, oh, okay. Um, right. So, so yeah, John. Um, I'd, I'd known all his more, I guess, the more classic kind of traditional sounding modal jazz, um, but I hadn't fully gone deep into his spiritual jazz at that point when I was maybe 
13, 14 years old. But then all of a sudden, uh, I discovered the music of Ferris Sanders uh, from a DJ playing it on on in a club and on radio. Mr. Scruff in Manchester, he's a great DJ who's released some beautiful records. Um, but he played "You've Got to Have Freedom" by Ferris Sanders, and then when I heard that, I was totally blown away because it was a new world of jazz for me and I went and checked out every single Ferris Sanders record and everything that he played on uh, and discovered Journey in Satchid Ananda by Alice Coltrane which he plays Ferro plays so beautifully on and that was the moment where I knew what direction I needed to go in because it had this really beautiful meditative quality and I was studying meditation and it had the freedom and, and creativity that felt really good to listen to. It was organic, but it felt like uh, it had a structure and a purpose to it and a, pl a plan in place. And, and um, I really liked it. I listened to that album over and over again and, and Alice's harp, um, the way she plays harp, there's actually still not that many people that play like that. Traditional harpists always get quite confused by, uh, because she's not a classically trained harpist, Alice Coltrane, she was a piano player. Um, that then John Coltrane actually bought the harp for her and, and um, she took it up sadly after, I think after he passed away uh, and and used it as a way of connecting to his spirit again um which is incredible like a really deep way of making music and uh she plays it in this really um meditative um pulse free flowing way that that uh, it, it comes in big waves of beauty beauty the the glissandos and stuff and it's constantly flowing and sparkling and uh I love it. I've, I've, I, I, that was the reason pretty much straight away I, I, I got my, a harpist to come and join our band. Whoever I could find that played harp, I, I wanted to bring them in. And, uh, and ever since, I've always had a harpist in the band. We play one of Alice, uh, Alice Coltrane's songs in the soundtrack. And by the way, I just want to mention for the listener, if you love the music that you're hearing at our commercial breaks, uh, we do have a uh, we, we put together the soundtrack on spotify it's the black label if you search for the jeremiah show and you'll find this is episode uh 379 so check it out matthew wholesale um you can hear his music and then find and follow him uh everywhere else so you mentioned modern art and architecture we've got one more one more break in one minute how did that inspire you? That's that's so fascinating to me that modern art and architecture, you mentioned Japan, but how how specifically did that inspire, does architecture inspire you in your music? Um, I think uh, people like uh, Frank Lloyd Wright and um, Lacabousier, uh, really interesting uh, architects that, that created these beautiful, buildings in environments were nature they were surrounded by nature so glass all around and uh they would be like framing something incredible so you'd have a almost like this nature painting live painting or picture all yeah, right that's why up. frank lloyd wright is so well no he's well known for that bringing nature into the home right that was his yeah. architecture there's actually a track on my album when the world was one that's called falling water which is both appropriate for manchester Famous falling water yeah and for the architecture of frank lloyd right um my mum my mum's uh, really into design and interior design and architecture and when i was growing up she had lots of beautiful books um with a lot of his his stuff in and i used to look at them and isn't the falling I, I, water house just so amazing it's, it's as, art, as an art yeah yeah, and, and I think um, it is a bit of a dream of mine at some point to to try and save up to buy a, a, a modernist house. Um, it's it's all build one, um, 
but uh, definitely inspired by all of that uh, or a modernist recording studio. That well, after this show, you're going to sell so many records for yourself and on Mondawana <laughs> records of your, you're going to be able to buy that house. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we got to take one more break. We'll be right back. We're, uh, we're going to talk about the new uh, album and your new band with Ma uh, Matthew Halsell. Uh, the, the new album's called Salute to the Sun. We will be right back. Last break. Okay. And you wanted to record something here? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, let me find it. Okay. Three, two, one. When you're living with a mental health problem or supporting someone who is, having access to the right information is vital. It can be really worrying when someone you know is going through a difficult time. Our information at Mind UK covers a wide range of mental health conditions and contains helpful tips on supporting someone. We won't give up until everyone experiencing a mental health problem gets support and respect. We're fighting for mental health, for support, for respect, for you. Find out more at mind.org.uk. Can you clean up my stumble or should okay. I redo that? No, no, no. Okay. I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, all right. There we go. Okay. Did Almost finished. Uh, Matthew, do you have a few more minutes okay. for us? Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Okay. Really, this is a great conversation about it, jazz. Yeah. It's hard, hard to talk about music and jazz, and I, lo I love it. All right. Really good stuff. Here we okay. go. Three, two, one, you're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. I want to make sure that I mention again, uh, the new album is Salute to the Sun. You can also pick up uh, and buy merchandise, videos, and get all the latest news and tour dates at MatthewHallsale.com. One of the ways that you can really support musicians these days, because uh, the record deals and the, and, the, and the way that the streaming services pay artists like Matthew wholesale uh it's in pennies and so one of the ways that you can really support is go see them live if you can buy the merchandise and buy directly from their website all these things really do help um fund the music that we all love in our lives daily uh matthew wholesale is one such musician and artist he's a trumpeteer trumpeter uh he's a producer dj and he's the founder of Gondwana Records, has been our guest, our special guest this entire hour. Now let's talk about the new album. Uh, welcome back, Matthew. Yeah. Salute to the sun. So much is great about this. This is, you, you formed a new band. You, tell us about the musicians in the band and, what, and the instruments that they play. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, I've been releasing music for... 12 years now um but uh, uh two years ago i felt like i really wanted to up the game again and to write and record and do this every week i've been building a recording studio in my house for for about 10 years saving up money from you know my career and um was finally in a position where i can record in every room in the house so we had the harpist in the front room uh the double bass player in the downstairs bathroom which sounded amazing actually and uh musicians in every room in the house basically and um and so i wanted a bunch of musicians that were committed to this project that would be able to meet up every week um and that challenged me as a composer having to write enough material for a session each week is really good um and these musicians, I actually spent a lot of time researching. Um, I, I discussed it with my previous band and they were all at a point in their lives where they, they were stretched in many ways and they'd moved away from Manchester and couldn't commute every week. Um, so we had the long conversation and everyone said it was fair uh, to be able to move forward. Um, so I went on the hunt for local musicians that uh, could do this and um, I found some fantastic players, uh, younger players as well. Uh, so on the harp there was Maddie Herbert 
and um, I discovered her. She was actually a, a fan of my music for about two years, and and part of a university course, she she chose to uh, rearrange the track Fletcher Moss Park uh, for a big band. Uh, she rescored it out, so she'd got in touch quite a while ago and asked if I could send her the sheet music that I'd composed and then she could develop it uh, which is really beautiful to uh, know that other harpists had been inspired by by our music um, so Maddie came on board uh, and then there was a fantastic uh, saxophone and flute player who, who was really young as well Matt Cliff um, and I discovered him through a band called Ancient Infinity Orchestra. Um, they were based in Leeds, just north of uh, Manchester. Um, and they were really exciting, uh, sort of almost Sun Ra, Stroke Pharaoh inspired band. Um, but Matt in particular stood out as his personality and, and his music, the way he played, um, really appealed to me. So we, we asked him if he wanted to join the band. He was really up for it and excited. And then um, I got a percussionist and a drummer that were both friends. Um, I really liked their personality, Alan Taylor on drums and Jack McCarthy on percussion. And they were amazing. They're, they're like the two nicest, most positive humans that I've, I've worked with in a long time. And, and they love the music. They love, love touring together. Um, and they've been really like, added a lot of energy, not just musically with the drums, but uh, in terms of like everyone's mentality and, and kind of feelings for the project. It's great. Um, and then, and then there's, um, Livy Gorka on piano, who has been in Manchester for quite a long time. He's a Romanian uh, musician, uh, fantastic. Uh, he he was, uh, I, I discovered him through uh, Alan and Jack. Uh, they played together a lot, but I'd seen him in Manchester a lot. He was in a great couple, couple of bands that I nearly signed to the record label. And so I, I was really happy to, to work with him. Um, so yeah Gavin Barris on the bass he was he's been playing with me for since the very beginning actually uh we, so he's he wasn't a new member but um he he was the only remaining member of the previous lineups um we've been I think 14 15 years um playing mm -hmm. in bands together and and uh he's he's great he, he I think there's something about Gavin I talked about this a lot to friends and other musicians and in interviews that uh, I remember the very first jam session. I, I went to a jam session in Manchester and I'd been living in Liverpool for four years before that. And I, I moved back to Manchester and um, I, I went to these beautiful little jam sessions in this old pub um, called the King's Arms. And um, Gavin was on as the kind of rhythm section and when I did my solos it was he knew exactly how to communicate and play and work around my playing um it was like he had a psychic kind of reading of of what I was going to do next and so we developed this really strong musical relationship that's still there now on, on the first track on the new album Harmony with Nature there's a line I start with and Gavin plays, follows it almost in seconds later. Like, uh, it's like he knew exactly what notes I was going to play. So that's the band. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we only have a couple more minutes, unfortunately in, in those couple minutes. Um, I'd like to ask three questions. <laughs> so one, and you can just give me a short answer. If you like, you're rooted in Northern England in Manchester. I've never been. I, I, I know the football team. <laughs> yeah. uh, congratulations on that recently. Describe the landscape of your world, if you could, in Northern England. So you put that in our minds as we listen to your music, like the people, the food, the community, and the music. And then maybe if you wouldn't mind plugging a couple great jazz venues that we, if, if, if you're there or if you're traveling there or if we go, we could, we could visit yeah i mean uh it's it's an amazing city it's very diverse culturally um and i love that uh, especially where i live in uh, i live in a place called levenshume just outside 10 minutes outside of manchester and 
um, it, it, you can be inspired by so many different cultures, uh, food, uh, music, um, and I like that. Um, but it's an industrial working class city as well. It's quite a hard, hard working city. A famous, uh, the worker bee is kind of the symbol logo of the city, if you like, or, or mm. um, something. And and um, it, it's 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 a hard place to live, but it, it's got a beautiful heart and a lot of a big community. Um, people love music. There's a lot of record shops uh, that are amazing. There's a lot of really good DJs. I I, I go out to a lot of club nights and listen to DJs and they play every genre you can imagine over five hour sets uh, really e interesting eclectic mix uh, and musically it's the same there's there's so much diversity I mean we've got a lot of good music courses and colleges and universities um, there's a Chetham's like for music school and Royal Northern College of Music and lots of other places and, and these places have beautiful venues as well there's one called Stoller Hall in Chetham's and then in the Royal Northern College of Music they've got some uh, the, the Opera Theatre and, and another couple of spaces uh, that I've performed in both of those um, are really nice and then there's the jazz clubs uh, Matt and Fred's Jazz Club uh, a long time ago now uh, was was really really strong um it was run by matt nixon the saxophonist who i love i love his playing and i love his personality and when he was running it, it was seven nights a week jazz but it was not the sort of standards jazz in a way it was like it was the heavyweight impulse strata east black jazz uh quite a lot of blue note stuff in there as well um, and that's one of the first places that I was like, I came, I think I was, went there when I was maybe 22 or something and it blew my mind and made me set up a record label and then hustle every jazz musician I knew to try and get involved. So, Well, let's finish with that. Tell us about your, your record label, if, if you could, and, and, you know, maybe one minute to. <laughs> go on Wanda Records. I know. I'm sorry that we're running out of time. Take take as much time as you want. God Wanda Records. Uh, you, there's a reason you created this label, and I love it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the heart and soul of it. It did start in Manchester, and it was about this community, uh, these fantastic musicians. Um, but it took a long time to convince people to. You know, I was just this young kid that loved everyone's music but you know was i a good businessman could i could i help them make some money out of music uh, that took a long time to convince them but uh luckily nat birchall bought into it a fantastic saxophonist uh, and then a band gogo -Go penguin very different band sort of est style band um they bought into it and john ellis a great piano player bought into it all these manchester uh, musicians that are deeply rooted in jazz but uh do other stuff as well yeah, go to gonwana records.com and check out the artists on this on, on this label that they're, they're, they're amazing they're great great looking website yeah. too oh cheers <laughs> i cut you off were you in the middle of a sentence there to... i was just, yeah no i was just gonna say from that um there's still a lot of, I, I really love signing uh, local musicians but it's not exclusively a local record label uh, I've worked with a lot of artists internationally uh, recently we had a lot of success with a Polish piano player Hanya Rani uh, she's doing incredibly well and really talented and we've worked with obviously Dwight Tribble in LA um, and uh, we've just signed a guy in another guy in LA uh, Phi Sonics um, really interesting artist Seth um, and uh yeah we we're, we're we're 12 years in now and it's a really successful record label and and it's not just me there's a fantastic team that have been working with me over the sort of last eight nine years now uh it's grown to the point where there's six members or five members now uh, and um yeah it's it's a lot of fun uh and it's nice to support other people's music it's, yeah i'm not i don't i don't have an ego and i'm not excited about 
the kind of my own career as much as I get more in some ways out of giving a lot back to the community and supporting people. Um, and, and if I, you know, when I was younger, if someone had done that, it would have been really nice, but it's nice to be that person now. Um, yeah. My, uh, Matthew, you've got so much, uh, so much going on, so much talent and so many reasons to go, go to your websites and listen to your music, follow you, buy it, download it and, and go see if they can, uh, people out there listening. Uh, matthewholesale.com and you can also go to gonwanarecords.com thank you for for spending the hour with us and getting to know you a little bit better we hope to see you in la santa barbara or new york city maybe at the uh, at birdland jazz club uh next week i just want to mention we have art alexak uh, alexakis from everclear We've also got uh, Johnny Valente from Birdland Jazz is going to join us and talk about his reopening. If you're in New York City on July 1st, be sure to uh, go back to the famous Birdland Jazz Club. It survived the last year and a half and it is reopening. We want to congratulate Johnny for that um, and uh, all the people that love the music and love the venue. Thank you so much, uh, Matthew. Thank you for, for, for being on with us and, uh, we're going to take you out right now with Together by Matthew Halsell. This is the song that inspired the interview. <laughs> Everybody uh, communicate, listen more, and evolve, and have a great week. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you.